activity with the handout so that you don't have uh, to write all the time. You have the group work activity that where you will write. So don't be worry that you won't write today. <laughs> so the criteria assessment uh, measures the individual competencies of the students. So the tests that focus on the students of various levels. So for example, what kind of a criteria assessment in the classroom? We have, we design criteria tests, right? Because you design the test for uh, students of the lower grades, lower levels, that they can complete some tasks up to the highest level, right? So this is also a criterial assessment. And when you design, it, is, it, it sounds very nice because you have a criteria, for example, summative final assessment. It means that you have everything. And when you say these words, so uh, they sound very smart, right? Exploratory assessment is designed to find those competencies at which a student finds difficulties. For example, now in the seventh form, so because this is, I have uh, three forms and they are closer to me when I talk about uh, examples because I can compare the three classes. And um, the exploratory assessment, I want to see if they have reached the understanding of the passive voice. So I make a test for a whole lesson, but with different examples of the passive voice. So I want to see what do they understand? Do they understand the present passive, the past passive, the continuous passive? So what is the difficulty that they so this is exploratory assessment so that I know how to design my uh, next lessons. There is diagnostic assessment which is designed to determine the causes of the student's drawbacks. So for example, you teach them the present perfect continuous or you teach them the present tenses and you give uh, is to speak only about grammar, but of course we don't have only grammar for assessment. We have different, but just to take uh, a piece. So you have, for example, the tenses and you give different uh, questions. And you want to see where um, do they have this drawback? Do they have it in the continuous tenses? Do they have it in the perfect continuous tenses? So this is you focus on, you give specific examples to see if they grasp or if they grasped or if they didn't grasp the idea when you taught them. So this is diagnostic assessment. And again, you can take diagnostic assessment with criteria to the final and you can uh, make a mixture of assessments but to call it. Because when you say only summative assessment, it means that you don't focus on anything else but just to summarize the whole news. But if you want to see summative diagnostic assessment, then you want to see something else. So this is the goal. A lot of vocabulary work, right? Because they had to learn the vocabulary in order to, to say the words. But now we shall go back to the um, traditional way we test our students, to the um, test itself, the written test, and how to make uh, what to take into consideration when we want to assess our students. So the first one is the purpose or the goal or the aim of the test. It is one of the same thing. So this is where I want you to work together because you have there in front of you a piece of paper with some markers and we have books. You can have the four for the six, whichever is closer to you or you want us to work upon. So the sixth grade. Okay, I'll give you the sixth grade. Sixth grade, I have the sixth grade. Okay, so you have the secret, the new book, right? Yes. Okay, and choose a top. Or choose, we, of course, we can. We should choose a unit. So unit number one, or unit number two. Let us think about how unit number three, so that it is easier for you to design the next test, right? So um, we have step number one. You should uh, set the goal, the purpose, right or the aim of the test. Okay. So put down the goal on the paper that you have in front of you. Write down the goal of the test. So what will be the goal of your test? To do what? Let's take United Kingdom. Uh, but of course we have the, uh, a unit, right? So we need to work on a unit, not on it. Or you want us to take just a topic? Let's if to speak take a, a unit. A unit, of course. Unit. Where we have ideas, principles, or categories that we have to describe, to recognize, to identify, to determine. So this is the comprehension rubric, right? We have the application rubric mm -hmm. to apply, to determine, to compare, to demonstrate, to use, to classify, to expand. These mm -hmm. are the key words that your tasks should be like, right? So apply, determine, compare. This is for the application rubric. Integration, invent, produce, develop, give arguments, propose, select, guide. These are the key words for the integration rubric. So three rubrics we have, comprehension, application, integration, and we have specific words. And if you have the words, it is a lot easier to design the actual mm -hmm. test because you just 
say for example apply or describe and this way you um, it is very easy for you to just make the test and you know which rubric is to be evaluated <coughs> in what exercise so this is the matrix of specification designed so please you have uh, you want to work only with the text as far as i understand right and you will have here only uh, so this is the matrix of specification we have here the three rubrics right the three rubrics um, this one is um, for the baccalaureate exam mm -hmm. or for the thesis if you have designed it so I took it from the thesis this is what I uh, the formula um, did you write the culture civilization yeah. yeah okay so if you included culture civilization how much percentage would you give here we can have just a puzzle or some word search in order to okay. make them remember the main towns okay so you think about the yeah. tasks later on so if you have culture and civilization how much percent 10 percent 10 10 percent more and how much would you give for creativity how much uh, is left there how uh, much time i don't know how much is for grammar Here, 10. how five five percent or ten 10%? Yeah, because okay, so 10, 60, 70, 85? Next word grammar, 10, civilization, 10, 50. 30. Okay, so you are left with 30%. Okay, so you have designed, and here you will see the space, right? So this is why it is important, because in this way, you will see how much of the test you should include the tasks for. So you will see, this is like, before even the test is written, so you see in the space how it will look like. Okay. And now we need to, yes, we need to calculate how many exercises we should give for each. And now, I will teach you how to do it. Please. So, <laughs> okay. So first of all, how many items would you like to have? How many items? So to, for the whole of this test. How so many items do you want to, to have? Probably the text will have some, like two. No, just think two. about the items. How many? Two. Not, not there. We'll, we'll uh, sum up. So the text work. How many items? Two. Two. Yeah, not items. exercises, but items. Like for yeah, example, if I you have. Okay, so two exercises two. for grammar. One. For grammar. One. one. Culture and civilization. One. One. And uh, one. One. creativity. One. one. Okay. How many? Five. five, five, okay. Five. So put down here five, five items, right? Mm -hmm. Five items. <coughs> okay. And now <coughs> multiply the percentage that you wrote here. So you need the calculator, please. So multiply, multiply this percent with this percent here. These two. Twenty by thirty percent. No, your percentage, not mine. Mine. You gave different 40. percent. I understand, but okay. So this percent with that percent and divide one hundred. And how much do you have? Twenty. Twenty. Now multiply twenty. Multiply twenty. Okay. Okay. To how many items you have? Five. Multiply twenty. Two. Two. No, no. Multiply on the. With all the items. Yes. Yes. All the items. Okay. Multiply and divide one hundred. And how much do you have? One. One. Okay. The same happens here. Here, so you have to multiply all the percentages to see this amount you need to have zero point something one point something and i will tell you what you have so at least one rubric we need to have at least one rubric completed but be quick so it is clear right so you calculate <coughs> it will be very quick and i will tell you what happens next you will need to uh, write an item that will be based on there on the ideas the principles the description recognition the identification and determination in the text 
So the exercises should this item, it can be A, B, C, D, E, F, as long as uh -huh. you want. But they need to be only to check the comprehension according to the text. Mm -hmm. One item. You need one item to have application. It means that in that item you want to see some classification, some comparison or to demonstrate something. So you will need to give one item for that. And you have 0 0.5. And here you decide. Here you can decide. If you have 0 0.5, you can decide either to give one item to integration as in, for example, to have, if you had a chance to live in the UK. <coughs> so this is integration because they need to take from the text some information to integrate that information into their own uh, understanding and come up with a different result. So this is, if you want to do it in this, uh, at this point, you can write it after the text. Or you can combine with creativity, mm -hmm. for example. And write in the creativity some more uh, ideas for them to develop plus the one in the last item of the comprehension of the integration rubric from the textbook and in this way you cover. And for example, not to have, you can have a very long test and to have, you have uh, application, exercise 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for example. You have um, uh, application and you can have exercise 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, in integration 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or you can combine. But in your test, they should be seen uh, which exercises are combined and which exercises are for integration of the reading of the text comprehension or which one <coughs> is the creativity. So when you calculate all the points, so you will have uh, like a picture of how many exercises or items you actually need for each of the points. Because when you write that you want eight items, okay, what if you do all the items with multiple choice? Is it grounding application integration? No. So all of the exercises should be different. <coughs> grounding or comprehension is the same thing, they are synonyms. So uh, the idea is that you design different um, tasks <coughs> in order to check the free items. And in, in this way, if you design the test like this, you will see that you will not have negative grades at the test paper. So ever since I'm using the uh, matrix of specification, well, there are cases when I have negative grades, but it's not like half of the students to have negative grades, as there sometimes happens with other teachers. They come and say that um, the whole class, or they don't have tens. This is impossible. You need to have tens at the test paper. If, you, if nobody has a ten at the test paper, perhaps the test was just too difficult for the students. So again, no test can be at the initial test paper because we design it, <coughs> you expect the students to come from their vacation, but of course, um, maybe the expectations were too high. But still, if the test is designed according to these rubrics, there will not be any negative marks. And in this way, if you design it and you put it in your portfolio, you can have like a very specific uh, um, test done, which is uh, quite important. So. Uh, for example, in my case, how I designed my matrix, so I had one item which I designed the question, right? So, according to the test, text, if you remember the backup exam, we have some questions mm -hmm. on the text, which are very easy because the answers can be seen in the text, right? So this is the comprehension rubric. Like this. We have the application where the students need to find the synonyms, the antonyms, the true or false exercises, so in this way, they apply what they have read and they see that it's in the end. Integration, what is the message or the idea of the text? So this is the integration because they need to actually to see if they have understood the text and in order <coughs> to paraphrase what was in the text. So this is the uh, integration. For grammar, here I have recognize. So what is recognize? I will give you everything in the handouts. You don't need to photo it. Um, so we have recognized. It means the students should see. What do you need to put there? A noun, a verb, an article. So this is the comprehension because they need to. If you they understand that there is necessary to insert an adverb or an adjective. So this is already a competence acquired. We have multiple choice. Of course, we have multiple choice. You give them full slash different, and we have supply the answer where you have, for example, the verb, 
and they need to supply <coughs> the correct voice and the correct tense. So this is already integration because they need to focus to conclude, like to make a conclusion of everything that they have learned in order to supply the correct answer. Culture and civilization. They need to identify. So the topic was, for example, uh, uh, is it necessary for us to study foreign languages? So identify what <coughs> kind of foreign languages are there. It is quite easy, right? So everyone knows, and we can see the competence. Have the students understood what we're talking about? So we have here uh, the uh, identify. Apply and compare. So again, this is one item, but in that item, I did not divide. So I write, what foreign languages uh, are the most spoken in the world? Question. Um, what are the advantages and disadvantages of knowing foreign languages? And three, uh, if you were given a chance, what language would you like to study, uh, if not to take English into account? And still, so they, ha in the same uh, task, so out of three questions, <coughs> I covered the three rubrics. And if I, for example, give here five points here, seven points here, and ten points there, the students who will identify the languages will have five points, right? Mm -hmm. The tasks are clearly set. It is, I could write, for example, here, uh, a man who knows a foreign language, um, or doesn't know a foreign language, doesn't know anything about his own, right? And let the students write what they want there, right? And some of them will say, I don't understand what you want. But I could have the same uh, task, but just uh, maybe uh, set in a different way. And why not help the student in passing the test, but always making such difficult tasks so that when they come to the test, they say that I don't understand anything. We should help the children, because some of them actually know things, but don't know how to, or you need to, to look for something to help them. So let us help them with the correct, uh, correctly written test. <coughs> so, um, in the creativity, it is the same thing because we have to identify, and here I strongly disagree with the fact of just writing a simple sentence for the creativity or for the essay. So in order to have an essay, to write an essay, you need the student to help. Look at the tests, how in the Romanian language, how they are designed. There is so much information and it so much helps the student in actual, and this is Romanian language that they know. And we have the English language, which is a foreign language, and we write only one sentence. I strongly disagree, and um, if I had this power to change the Bacot exam to actually just borrow of how the task is set in the Romanian language and have the same in the English language, so that the student knows there are five, six steps for them to follow in writing an essay, and in English we have only one sentence, which is difficult for them to focus, what to write, when, and then everything is written, and when I design my test, I always actually write sentences name two advantages, give set three examples, use uh, um, examples of your own, use some general facts. In this way, I help the students to actually involve um, or uh, introduce some of the information that they know and try to, to say it in English. And maybe they have some mistakes, but at least they try. They don't give me the test uh, as I gave them, so the clean one. They try, they scribble something there, they write there, and in this way I can see that we have a progress. Okay, so after we design the matrix of specification, I will give you in the handouts and you will see how I managed to calculate, and in this way when you go home you can actually apply and have various things. At various, at the second form, third form, and if you want you can, for example, design one matrix of specification and use it at different times. Not to make different, uh, different times, different matrices, because it's difficult. But still, when I first started to work, I designed every test with different matrices because it was interesting for me to just calculate, to see what can I uh, do a different uh, thing. So next one is to set the uh, test operational objectives. Because here, uh, after we, when you give, for example, the thesis and you give it to the administration to be signed, we need to write and the objectives. So what, what do we want to, uh, to assess? Because here we have to assess, for example, um, reading comprehension, to assess, uh, we have um, writing skills, to assess uh, some of the previously learned material, for example, if you have uh, the culture and civilization, you have passed, for example, about uh, <coughs> Princess Diana, about monarchy, and you can write there in order to see what are the specific uh, tasks that you want to assess, not general things, uh, like to assess vocabulary, 
what kind of a vocabulary based on the or what. So uh, here are very specific. Uh, the objectives, are, just as at the lesson, the objective, objectives are very specific with information. So, number five. Now it is time to elaborate the items, right? So uh, we already uh, looked through the comprehension rubric, the application rubric, <coughs> integration rubric of some of the help words. And next you need to see what kind of questions do you want to have. Direct questions, like if it is a direct question, <coughs> who was that, that the answer can be found actually in the text. Indirect questions, where they need to analyze a little bit. Argumentative questions there where you need them to ask them why, why not? And uh, okay, now the next step will be to complete the verification scale. So what is a verification scale? It is something that what answers you expect to have. Because for each of the tasks you want a specific answer, right? So you don't expect that each of the students will give some of the questions, the students will give different answers, but still, if you take them and summarize, they will all have the same goal, because you want to, uh, to assess the reading comprehension. And here we need to see how this, uh, it, how this verification, how should it be? So the first, uh, very important, is so that it should be very <coughs> comprehensible and easy to apply. So it means that you, it is much easier if you have a, a, a certain a question designed so that the answer is very vivid not for you to look for where is it or to have many options because if you have too many options of the same question the same answer then you will have to give the points to every answer this happens quite a lot by the way so if you have an example if you take the synonym out not to find the learners to find the synonym in the text but to give the word from the text in the rubric and ask the students to give the synonym that they know. In this way, it will not be very objective because the students might, because of the polysemy, the students might understand it in a different way. And then they come and say, but I understood it in this way. And you will just be obliged to give them the point. So it is much easier if you give your own synonym and ask the learners to find it in the text. In this way, there is absolutely no doubt of what is. So small things but are very important when you design the test if you don't want to have some problems because many of our students have parents who know English or cloud <coughs> translators and they come and they say, well, I have wise. And again, so um, to avoid different circumstances that will put you in a different, maybe unpleasant situation, it is better for you to just make the, the tasks very vivid and very clear and the scale to be also very easy to apply. Should be specific concerning the answers that will be acceptable and which will be unacceptable. And again, here also there are many mistakes. You give them the assignment, you expect an answer, but the students understand the same question in a different way. And here you should design in such a way the task so that you don't have unacceptable answers. So everything that you want to, to see, what the students, how they understood the, the text, you need to see in the task. The task should be so clearly set that there are absolutely no possibilities of unacceptable answers. The items should not allow contradictory <coughs> appreciation. Also very important, no contradiction. So sometimes you give them the task and you have, for example, in the grammar and the students can have the as present simple as present perfect. Mm -hmm. Or for example, uh, they can have uh, a, a grammar, not on that grammar, that synonyms as well, if you have in the text two words that are synonymous, perhaps, uh, or whatever, and you give them but you want an answer, but in fact they can be also the other. So if you design the test in a way that the students have too many options, then you just have to, to contradict with them and it will not be a successful test. So very attentive when you, what you want them to write, especially with grammar. <coughs> grammar is very specific, and when you give them certain sentences where two or three answers are possible, and again you have to accept. Uh, it's something that I cannot say that this hasn't happened to me, but still, because you think you design a test, and you think of a tense, and you insert the marker, but after that, for example, they always complain. And I wanted to use here, they are always complaining to say present continuous when someone is frustrated. Mm -hmm. But if to say they always complain of present simple, it is also correct. Yes. 
So how, and the cigarette company says, I don't understand that there's something that they, they that is something uh, contradictory or, or it's something that they don't like. To me, it's <coughs> something very, that happens every time. Can I uh, not, uh, I have to give them the point because they know the rule. I wanted to have it. Perhaps I should have written there, I am so annoyed with them. In this way, I would have been right and they not. So again, just a simple word and they ca it can change, especially if the students know the rules. And if you work hard, the students know the rules. <laughs> they come and they tell you. So they should not doubt the scientific truth. This is again, it is very important. Sometimes, so you should not make scientific mistakes. You cannot design a test and have some mistakes there, some grammar mistakes and then expect the learners to actually find the correct answer if you on your own you make some mistakes. To specify the allotted number of points for each item as being answered integrally or partially. This is extremely important. So you have five questions. Out of five questions, <coughs> for example, you want to have two points for the answer that, that for the direct uh, answer. And, uh, for example, you write one point if the answer is uh, written is found in the text but is not spelled correctly, for example. So everything should be, or as at the Bokat exam, at the text the work, so no points are lost if there are spelling or grammar mistakes. So it is specified in the scale. And in this way the students doesn't lose the points if they don't, the students don't lose the point if they don't write the spelling of the grammar correctly. If you have the same in your test, and the students should know that even if they do the mistakes, if they commit the mistakes, still uh, they don't lose the points. And again, everything here should be mentioned in the verification scale. And the verification uh, rubrics, <coughs> yes, you have this on the handouts. So, uh, should always have this, the item number. So, this is like a, a table that all of the tests should have in the verification scale. The maximum of the points for the item. Like you have five points. Acceptable variance for a correct answer. So you, you want them to think that if they give this one, it will also be accepted, for example. Or if you want an acceptable answer. They haven't found, for example, the synonym in the text, but they uh, gave their own answer. If you want to accept that variant, then you should have it here. Like if the answer is, if you want, of course, it's a your choice. Points allotted for each of the correct answer and some of the notes. So if you take into consideration and decide the value table. And here, um, <coughs> there are so many variants of how to actually decide the value table. If you open the internet and you look for the how to, uh, everybody speaks about the Gauss curve. So that the students should be allotted a lot of, so 33% of the test if it is uh, done, so you have a five. And you should always take this into consideration. 33%. So if you have uh, 70 points, you calculate 73%, uh, you calculate what is the grade. And uh, in this way, you have from that point, for example, you have 35, right? For example, and from 35 points, you have a five. You need to give a five. So if you have very specific answers, and again, if you take uh, again into consideration the Bakaut exam, and if you see the verification scale there, it is very, uh, some questions are still so very questionable, some of the tasks, uh, some of the uh, verification uh, scale uh, items there. So you give two points uh, are given to the correct, so it is not clear, uh, again, if the students, as in my case with that girl, which I was very disappointed in the true or false sentence, so there was written, so the student identified, <coughs> she didn't circle the false, and the, so many times they told her, circle all the time, but she explained, and it was considered incorrect because she didn't circle. And again, it's something very, I don't know how objective it is to um, just punish a, a student with two points, because she didn't circle when she explained that yeah. the sentence was true. But again, it's something that happened, yeah. and we should take that into consideration. Perhaps when you do your verification scale, you can write there. Even if it is not, for example, circle the answer, but the argument is correct, so you still allot four points. And if you do that in the verification scale, then if it happens with you, the same as happened to me, so the student can still get the points. And the students pass the test, which I consider uh, very important. Um, to have the test, um, we have many teachers in our school, we have uh, uh, Russian language, for example, and uh, the teacher never has tens of the test paper. 
And in my, um, I think that it is not correct not to have a 10. So if, if you never have a 10 on the test paper, perhaps the test is just too difficult. You should have and 10s, you can have a 2s and 3s, but if you have 10s, then the test is a success because the, some of the students we always, we always have in the class, we have students who are very good and we have students who just don't have the time to study, right? So they have the assistance. Yes, I don't know why, what do they have at home, but still they have to do something at home, I think, and they don't have the time to study. But still, if we have a test paper, and if we designed it correctly, then we'll have tens, and nines, and eights, and seven. It, it all depends on the students. Okay, so this is uh, all for the, um, what I wanted to share with you. Um, I wanted, of course, for us to make the matrix, to calculate everything, to take into consideration absolutely everything there, to show different types of tests and of verification scale, but because we are just one group, so perhaps you will just have to we'll look at home, and if you have any questions, uh, perhaps I will uh, be at the spring school, as the girls mentioned, and uh, maybe have the same uh, presented once again, and if you have any questions, by then we can still discuss them and see and design different tests and uh, why not publish the tests uh, in the meta magazine and have different tests with different uh, rubrics and uh, as you design them and have credits for that because uh, testing is very important and it takes a lot of time as you see yeah. to, to make one test there are so many steps to cover and we have to cover them so and if we uh, elaborate and we publish them in item magazine for the six, for the seven, for the eight, you'll see how great it will be because teachers will just want to see a different way of how to design tests.